when people started saying that the um, the Earth wasn't flat, but it was a sphere, actually it's an information field if you go deeper and deeper, but um, it was a sphere. People said, uh, some people said, that's impossible because people on the bottom would fall off. Mm -hmm. Now, if you suppress information, or you are in ignorance of information, then you can dismiss something as impossible. Well, it's not impossible at all. It's perfectly logical if you are in receipt of the information necessary to see that it's uh, logical and possible. So, once you, for instance, introduce the law of gravity to this, the Earth is a sphere uh, equation, then what appears without that knowledge to be impossible and ridiculous and crazy suddenly becomes perfectly logical. And in so many areas, um, it's why I talk for so long when I do my day events, like in Amsterdam, um, it's because there's so many dots, first of all to, to explain it in terms of dots, but then to connect them. Connecting the dots is, is the most important thing. Because then you start to see that the apparently impossible is perfectly logical. For instance, um, you know, it, it, it would take a long time, you know, uh, talking now, but it, 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 it's one of my, my events, like I say, hey, I go on for hours, but um, in simple terms, um, that table cannot be solid, because scientists tell us it's made of atoms, and atoms have no solidity. Um, and that's, well, that's impossible, mate. You, you, you gotta be solid. Or, well, you, you, can't, you can't have things that aren't solid making up a solid world, and all these things go around. It's like bewildering. But when you realize the nature of reality, uh, and it's all about decoding information, very much like um, the computer uh, connects into the wireless internet and brings a whole collective reality onto your screen. And if you go to the same website in um, South Africa, uh, the Netherlands, uh, London, uh, uh, anywhere, um, you will see the same reality, no matter where you are, because it's a collective reality that the computer's decoding. Once you realize that we are decoding reality through this, what I call, body computer, then um, you realize that the illusion of solidity comes from the decoding process, and that what we call atoms are merely part of that decoding process. So suddenly, when you get deeper into this, there is no paradox between something that has no solidity making up a solid world because the world ain't solid you know when, when, when you go you take a computer game on the computer or you go to it to an internet and you watch a uh, you know a video or whatever um, there seems to be time and space there seems to be distance there seems to be a three-dimensional reality in front of you um, and yet, that is being generated from information. You put a, a, a disk um, in, the, in the computer, a software disk, look at it. I mean, it's just like a, a silver disk. There seems to be anything on it. They, but but um, you put it in, in, in the tower or, or whatever, and that information is decoded into apparent time and space on the screen. Well, that's what we're doing. And atoms, what we call atoms, are merely part of that decoding process. But again, um, when is that ever discussed in the public arena? Mm -hmm. Never is. Yes. And so people are denied these wider understandings of reality, and, and without them, they, they can't fully understand, or even nearly often understand, why the world is therefore structured as it is, and why these apparent scientific paradoxes and, and bewilderments are actually perfectly easily explainable. It goes uh, back as we perceive time, although again, time's an illusion. Mm. Um, again, that can be explained very simply. Uh, but uh, it, 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 in, in our perception of time, it, it goes back uh, tens of thousands of years, probably hundreds of thousands of years, possibly, um, that we have been in this bewildered, suppressed state because it's clear when you look at the the common themes, the extraordinary common themes of, of ancient legends and accounts from all different ancient cultures around the world, that there was um, uh, a time when this, this earth, this reality was very, very different. 
um, almost unimaginably, uh, imaginably different from what we have today. It was a time when humans had, had massive expansion of consciousness compared with today. They were capable of, of, of incredible feats. They lived vastly uh, long lives. Uh, you know, when you see these ancient accounts about people living uh, extraordinary long lives, and people today go, that's not possible, that's ridiculous. But actually it was, because it was a different energetic, a different uh, energetic environment, a different environment in terms of consciousness. And, and, and people had this awareness of the connection of everything. And when I watched the, um, the Avatar uh, movie, I'm not saying this is what Cameron was depicting, you know, I was saying this is what it meant to me, where the blue people with the, the lion noses were uh, in complete um, harmony with their environment, the animal kingdom, the, 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 uh, the natural world. Uh, that very much corresponds to the kind of world that uh, these ancient accounts talk about, what some call the golden age. And then, and I, you know, I, I go into this in, in, my, in my latest book, uh, You Maurice Get Off Your Knees, uh, to a, a very large extent, great detail. There was what I call the schism. Something intervened, and a, a vast change took place. And this is what, uh, not just the Bible, but, but ancient accounts around the world uh, often describe as the fall of man, or the fall of humans. It was a fall into ignorance from what they were, we were like before. And that fall into ignorance was not by natural disaster or natural um, uh, change. It was caused by intervention uh, by a non-human race. And um, uh, the more that the years have passed, the more that I've understood the deeper levels, and there's so much more to know, the deeper levels of reality and how reality works, the more blatantly obvious it's become uh, to me uh, in terms of how they do it, how they did it, how they, how they brought about that uh, massive, quote, fall from expanded consciousness into a state of um, manufactured ignorance. The fall of man, the fall of humans, uh, did happen, and um, I talk about it in my in my talks about how it happened. And uh, in so many ways, uh, I would suggest it relates to a very large extent to the moon and what it really is. And the fact that the moon has not been here anything like as long as that's people about, that's about your, your, your perceive. Your book. I'm saying it is. Um, it is one of two things. It's either a hollowed out planetoid. Mm. Um, and interestingly, there's more and more speculation that uh, the moon of um, Mars, Phobos, is actually some kind of um, either hollowed out or manufactured craft rather than what it seems to be. Mm -hmm. um, it's The moon is either something like that or it's um, it's, it's, it's totally created, totally manufactured. And this takes us back to um, what I said earlier. To understand what is happening, we have to um, disconnect ourselves from preconceived idea of possibility. Because, hey, you can't make that. Well, no, you can't make that. The people that made it can make that. Uh, and when, what happened in terms of the moon was exactly the same sequence that we talked about right at the start. In that I sat down at my computer one day when I was writing this, this latest book and, and I felt the energy in the room change, which is always a sign for me that something's going on um, in terms of information because it's happened so often. And then I got this very clear strong thought go through my mind. Again, something I've experienced many times. And it just said, the moon's not real, as you think it is. The moon's not what you think it is. And from that uh, initial kind of thought, I went onto the internet and put a few uh, relevant words into Google. And up came a book called Who Built the Moon, which I didn't know about at the time. 
Uh, and I, I, I sent for that. I read it in like 24 hours or so. And it was talking about the fact the moon couldn't be real for many and various reasons. It real in terms of it, a naturally occurring heavenly body. And, and, and what's, what's amazing when you get into this whole area of research is so many things that are considered and, and even taught as scientific fact turn out to be nothing more than someone's bloody theory which through repetition has been accepted to be how it is. And they don't, the, the truth is they don't know where the moon came from or how it was formed. And it, it's interesting because when you're born into the world, you tend to accept the way the world is as the way the world is. So you're born into the world and the moon comes up. And the moon comes up time after time after time after time. Um, and it goes through its sequence of, of, of full moon down to whatever uh, the sequence, down, down to the sequence where we have the, the, the new moon and all the rest of it. And you kind of accept it because it's there. But when you start asking questions about it, it's like, I never knew that. First of all, they have no idea where it came from. The, 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 the theory that, that they'll quote to you, if you say to mainstream science, how was the moon formed? They'll say, well, a Mars-type planet crashed into the Earth uh, in, in, in its kind of early formation, and a great chunk came off and became the moon. And then when the physics of that didn't work out, that was called the, the whack theory, or the big whack theory. And then um, when the physics of that didn't work out, they came up with a double whack theory which is that the Mars-type planet hit, 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 hit the Earth and went away and then came back and hit it again. Um, and, and the truth is they haven't got a clue uh, 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 how the moon was formed. As, as one um, scientist said, the only thing you can say about the moon is it, it must be observational error because it shouldn't be there. It's far, far too big to be a satellite of, of, of a planet the size of the Earth. It's bigger than Pluto, mm -hmm. you know? And as you know, one scientist speculated that the Earth, with its magnetic field, might not have any satellites at all. But if it did, it should be a very small satellite. He postulated maybe 30 miles around. This moon is 2,100 uh, 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 miles around, and and so it shouldn't be there. And so if you want to know what's happening, you look at these anomalies and you go, okay, there's something to follow up here. There's something to, 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 to play out, to see what this moon's all about. But what most people do, because of their preconceived idea and their, 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 their manipulated uh, sense of possibility, is they won't do that. They'll Dismiss it. Ah, oh, the moon, don't be stupid, you're mad. Reptiles, now the moon's not real. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not right in the head, mate. Um, but what I am is someone that wants to know what's going on. Uh, wants to know how things are so we can do something about it. And if uh, people want to call me crazy or dismiss me, well, they have a right to do that. Couldn't care less, mate. You know, couldn't care less. It's not even water off a duck's back anymore. You know. But yeah. Okay. I'm crazy, all right. I'm pleased for you. But what I'm interested in is what's happening, and I will go on pursuing what I uh, believe I need to understand, uh, no matter what people say to me. You know. You don't want to believe them that the moon's not what you think it is. Fine. You believe what they tell you it is. I don't have a problem with that. But don't tell me what to think and don't tell me what to do, because I won't have it. And, and that's the only way you're going to actually find out what's happening in the world, when you're prepared to go to places where you know you're going to get ridiculed, you know you're going to get dismissed, but they're places you need to go if you're going to take the next step down the rabbit hole. Free our minds from the programming that turns infinite consciousness having an experience into a four-legged animal from which we get wool that have lost the ability to decide perception and reality for themselves and have to have it decided for them.